Hi, in this video, I am going to discuss one of the experiment of heat transfer lab that is heat transfer by force convection. Convection is a process of heat transfer in fluids which is accompanied by bulk movement of fluid particles. Based on the nature of movement of these fluid particles, convection is further classified into natural convection and force convection. When the bulk movement is due to the external force, it is termed as force convection. In this particular experiment, we are going to practice how a convective heat transfer is taking place and we are going to calculate corresponding heat transfer coefficients. You are seeing the force convection heat transfer apparatus. This blower takes the air from the surrounding and it sends it through this orange pipe. Within this pipe, a metal rod is fixed which will be heated by applying potential across it. The potential applied across the heat rod is the heat input for this particular system. Hence, the heat input can be calculated by the product of voltage and current. The main objective of this experiment is to calculate the heat transfer coefficient experimentally and compare it with the empirical heat transfer coefficient. The total process can be segmented into four stages. After calculating the heat input, the first step is to calculate the flow rate of the blower. To calculate the experimental heat transfer coefficient and empirical heat transfer coefficient, we need to know the flow rate and the velocity of the air. To find the flow rate of the air, an orifice meter assembly is fixed at the end of the tubular section. Inside the orifice meter assembly, a circular orifice plate with a hole in the center is fixed using flanges across the pipeline. As the flow area for the air is suddenly reduced, the fluid particles collides with the orifice plate and takes a turn and go through the small hole. Because of this collision and taking a turn, there is a significant pressure loss is obtained across the orifice meter. That pressure loss can be measured by connecting it through a manometer, where the manometer fluid is water here. By seeing the difference in the manometer reading, we can find the manometer head. By noticing down the manometer level in the manometer, we can calculate the pressure drop across this orifice meter. Once we know the pressure drop across the orifice meter, we can calculate the flow rate. For the calculations, we need to know the diameter of the orifice and the diameter of the pipe, which will be given in the apparatus specifications. In this experiment, we got H1 and H2 to be 4.5 and 8.5 cm, which we have to convert to meters so that we can avoid errors. As the manometric head will be the difference of H1 and H2, we can calculate the pressure head using this formula. Once we calculated the head from this particular formula, we can substitute that in the volumetric flow rate equation for orifice meter. For the present orifice meter, the specifications are given. The air head is calculated now and the orifice discharge coefficient is given which is a constant. Then the pipe cross section and orifice cross section diameter is noted already. Using this pipe cross section and orifice cross section diameter, we can calculate the area A1 and A2 which is the cross sectional area of the pipe and orifice. Once we calculated the area, now we can calculate the volumetric flow rate using this equation. So after we substitute the corresponding values from here, the flow rate is calculated to be 0.017 meter cube per second. To find the empirical heat transfer coefficient, we will be requiring Reynolds number in the later part. From the flow rate, we can calculate the air velocity inside the pipe by dividing the volumetric flow rate with cross sectional area of the pipe. Now let's move to the second part of the calculation. To calculate the experimental heat transfer coefficient, we need to know the temperature of the rod and the air. Five thermocouples were fitted across the length of the heater rod and once the system attains steady state, we have to calculate the average temperature of these five thermocouples. T1 will be the temperature of the air entering and T7 will be the temperature of the air that is leaving the pipe. T2 to T6 will be the thermocouple fitted at the heater rod. In a typical experiment, the blower and the heater have to be switched on. By noting down the manometer value, we can calculate the flow rate later. Now the second part is to find the temperature. By adjusting this knob, we can give the required potential across the heater rod. 
Now the heater rod will start heating up. After some time, the heater rod will come to a steady state temperature. To confirm whether the system has attained steady state temperature or not, we have to follow it with time. Hence, from the moment we started the heat input, we have to take the readings of thermocouple. By rotating this knob, we can change the thermocouple reading and we can see it from the digital display. After giving the heat input, we have to take the reading for 0th minute for all the thermocouples. Now we have to wait for 5 minutes to take the next set of thermocouple readings. Now we can see that the inlet air temperature is same, the outlet is slightly increasing, the thermocouple from T2 to T6 increasing. After 10 minutes, we have taken a reading still increasing when compared to 5th minute thermocouple readings. Now we can see in the 15th minute, the thermocouple reading T2, T3, T4, T5, T6 is almost same like what we got in 10th minute. There is no significant temperature rise from 10th minute to 15th minute. So we can assume that the system attained steady state. T1 and T7 will be the inlet and outlet temperature. We have to take average of T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6 and that will be the surface temperature of the heater rod. Now we have calculated the volumetric flow rate, surface temperature of the rod, inlet and outlet temperature of the air. With that we can calculate the experimental heat transfer coefficient. In the force convection process, we can calculate the heat transfer rate by this equation. Even though the applied voltage and current heats the heater rod, the amount of heat transferred to the air depends on the mass flow rate of the air. Hence, instead of using V into I for heat rate input, we are equating MCP delta T with HA delta T. In this particular calculation, we need the properties of the air. The properties of the air can be taken from the data sheet at the bulk mean temperature. The bulk mean temperature can be calculated by taking an average of Ti and To. The average of inlet and outlet air temperature will be the bulk mean temperature out of which we have to calculate the properties of the flow bed. From the data sheet, we can identify that at 33 degrees Celsius, the density of the air and the specific heat capacity of the air is around this particular value. The link for the data is given with the video. The equation is rearranged to obtain the experimental heat transfer coefficient. In this experimental heat transfer coefficient, we need to calculate three parameters. One is mass flow rate, surface area of the heater rod, then log mean temperature difference. By multiplying the density with the flow rate, we can calculate the mass flow rate and the surface area of the heater rod can be calculated by the formula pi dl. As we calculate the mass flow rate and surface area of contact, now we are moving on to calculate delta T LMTD. Delta T LMTD can be calculated by the formula given here. By substituting the temperatures obtained by the experiment, we can calculate the LMTD value. As now we have all the three values, we can substitute in the experimental heat transfer coefficient equation and we can calculate the heat transfer coefficient. Now the last step is to calculate the empirical heat transfer coefficient. For a pipe flow, Nusselt number can be given by Ritter's Boulder equation that is 0.023 into Reynolds number power 0.8, Prandtl number power 0.4. To calculate the Reynolds number, as we already took the properties of the air at the bulk mean temperature, we can directly substitute in the equation and we can calculate. The Nusselt number comes to be 121.9, which is rearranged to get the empirical heat transfer coefficient that comes to be 126.8 watt per meter square Kelvin. And thus, we calculated the experimental heat transfer coefficient and the empirical heat transfer coefficient. Thank you.